For this project, I will be demonstrating how I use two different methods of 3D capture in order to create uh, two, two separate 3D printable models, um, both of which were scaled off of this die-cast metal figure of Captain Phasma from the Star Wars series. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and start with the first method that we'll be talking about, which is... 3D, scan. um, 3D scanning is just what it sounds like. It is using a uh, 3D mappable uh, camera such as the Xbox 360 Kinect scanner. Um, and it's able to see objects in the round and actually texture map um, the object as a whole. Um, the way that you do so is you keep this in one spot and move it at about 45 degrees either down or upward. Um, just very slowly as you're also turning the object itself. Um, what that does is it's able to match polygons to each other as it goes around in uh, around the object, and it's able to finally create a scan. Um, some limitations that I did find with the Kinect scanner itself is it's made for humans, obviously, because it was made to play games that you're able to be captured with. Um, and so whenever I was trying to scan Captain Phasma here, um, it was actually really hard, and so it ended up looking a little bit different and it doesn't quite have a head. Um, as you can see here, and on the table in front of you. But um, anyways, what the uh, geometric aspect of this piece comes from is actually a limitation of the software itself. Um, the software is Kinect, um, the light version, or whatever you would call it, the free version, um, actually only allows you to export, I think it was 5,000 polygons, which is very minimal, even though it sounds like a lot. And so it ended up being very low poly, but I kind of liked the result. Um, as far as process, I began with, of course, the scan with Skinect. Um, I brought that into the slicer here, which is called NetFab. Um, with NetFab, I was able to do a plane cut and actually cut some of this base away to where it was more of a flat surface to print on. And then, of course, uh, I 3D printed it. And this piece alone took 22 hours in order to finish up. The second method, and in my opinion, the more effective method of, um, or at least in this project, um, of 3D scanning is going to be called photogrammetry. Um, photogrammetry is a process where you take mul a multitude of photos. In this case, I think it ended up being about 120 for myself, um, for uh, Captain Phasma, that is. Um, and the camera itself actually doesn't have to be anything special whatsoever. In fact, I used my iPhone 10 um, in order to capture all 120 photos. Um, and what this process does, what this software does, um, which is called Mesh Mixer, not Mesh Mixer, that's what I used after that, it's called uh, Meshroom. Um, what Meshroom is able to do is it's able to look at these different photos and different perspectives that you give it, um, and it allows the software to make a point map, is what it's called. And so with that point map, um, which I'm actually going to just for, uh, just for keeping it easy on myself, I'm going to be putting up a picture of that right now. Um, but what the process entails is um, these points on the point map will be created by the similar textures that it's seeing within the separate photos. And um, within these uh, frames, you can even uh, go back, it is dynamic, so whenever you take maybe 100 photos and say this area of Captain Phasma's arm on the right side isn't looking quite how you want it to, all you have to do is just take uh, maybe 10 to 15 more photos from all angles of that arm, upload them into the program, and re, um, I guess resubmit the process for the program to go ahead and render. Once it's done rendering, it will typically make that point map a little bit more clear. Uh, one spot that I could not seem to get that to happen is here on the cape. I think it's two reasons. is because it was first of all glossy, which is a no-no apparently for photogrammetry, and scanning as well. It's hard for the program to deal with that. Um, but not only that, but it is black, which is the absence of all colors, so it's really hard. Um, as you can see, the outcome is much more detailed than that of the 3D scan. Um, you can actually make out the different portions of the gun and the divots in the armor itself. Um, the face did come out pretty ghastly, it's got a little pit in the head, but um, what I was getting at there is also on the back, um, where this program had failed, is it wasn't able to capture really any points on the back whatsoever. Um, that being said, this piece was actually much rougher than it looks, believe it or not. It already looks like a baked potato. But uh, what I had to do is actually learn how to do something that's called 3D sculpting. It's just what it sounds like, except it's using a uh, software that... Well, the, the, the software that I use. There's multiple softwares. But the one that I use is called, called Mex Mesh Mixer. Um, and with Mesh... <laughs> goodness, that is a hard word to say. Mesh Mixer you are able to go in and use different types of brushes, such as maybe a pinch, or maybe a stretch, or a flatten. 
um, and you're able to change and alter the texture of a 3D object, um, which is typically an STL format, .stl, um, surface tessellation something. Um, but anyways, I really, really had to post-process this one. I worked on it for quite some time in order to get it to even look this good. Um, had to add some thickness to the base. I had to completely retexture this entire back, which is why it looks like a big lump of something. Um, and yeah, so that was the outcome on that, and that was photogrammetry. <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to just touch on the 3D printing of the objects themselves. Um, the method of 3D printing that I use here at the house is called FDM printing. Um, with FDM printing, it is laying down a layer by layer by layer um, pieces of plastic, or um, extrusions of plastic, if you will. Uh, and it is just a language that the printer reads called G-code. Um, with G-code, it is X, Y, and Z coordinates that the printer follows as a path. Um, I use Simplify 3D to create that for myself. Uh, and anyways, it took on the... Uh, Skinect version, the 3D scan, it took 22 hours in order to just print this one. Um, just because obviously on parts like this that are overhanging, you aren't able to just print into thin air with FDM printing. Um, for example, right here, it uh, printed up until this point probably just fine because it had something to build off of, but if you don't have anything to build off of on these overhanging bits, then it's going to print into nothing and fail. And so that's another thing is you have to generate something that's called supports. Um, supports are a mess. Supports are terrible to take off. And let me see if I can grab some. For example, that's what a support would look like. Um, supports are just layer by layer, just less of a resolution, also built up to these overhanging bits. And they will um, make it to where it's actually printable on those parts. And so typically the rule is you're going to put a support on anything that is overhanging past 45 degrees. Um, if it's anything greater than that, it's not going to succeed as its own um, object or as its own little overhanging bit. And so um, that would be the reason for that as well. Um, moving on to this piece, uh, which was photogrammetry. I believe this one took over 30 hours. I actually ended up having to leave the house and go to another town for a little bit while it was printing. Um, so about, I think it must have been about 34 hours that, until this one had finished. And it did require much more support. And I'll put a photo of each of them with support here in just a moment. But um, pretty much there had to be support up to here. There had to be support up to all of these bits following up the gun, up the arm, and um, underneath the cape. And so, um, just a ton, a ton, a ton of uh, build up, a ton of supports, and uh, that is due to the models obviously not being optimized for 3D printing. I didn't sculpt these aside from actually sculpting some of the back of this one and the different textures on it. Um, and so I just printed them as is, and I kind of thought that would be part of the project and kind of the fun. But um, anyways, that's just on the 3D printing of the objects. All in all, I think that, that I would consider both methods a success. Um, it was a, more of a study than anything for myself. Um, I was able to kind of test my ability to learn new programs because I ended up having to learn three or four. I think it was it was just three because I'd used NetFeb before in the past for other jobs, or not jobs, but uh, projects. Um, and so anyways, obviously this is going to have to be the winner of photogrammetry. Um, it has a head, first of all, and it also has a few more polygons, which was, again, a limit of the software itself. Um, but anyways, as you can see here, can see on the table as well. Um, that was the outcome. Anyways, thank you.